the way in this poem is the Taoist way. The way in our garden. The way splits soil between the jasmine, not in flower now, early March, and the orange buried Durata, deep green leaves, not shining like the jasmines, but feeding bulbuls and other singing visitors. And then the way bends right into deep shade, runs miles and miles, unseen, until it breaks back into sight a thousand miles away, where Bellum Kanda fiercely raises spears against the tartar weeds. I see the way go further, disappear in age and green, all time and space, and an acacia, tall tree over the garden wall. Two. The way divides in paving slabs and tracks, barely wide enough for hopping palm doves, and not bound by black soil and flyways over pink sage into white-leaved trees. Perhaps the way sinks underneath blue trachelium, where worms and moles live out their karma. Sometimes the way becomes always our one, crashes into the cold gray outer stones, the impassable garden. The way runs right today behind the very colored annuals, a glow like road signs in some Taoist sky, and through blue pansies, white alyssum clumped, aims at the olive tree and bright blue birds before it veers at almond trees' white blossoms. A crossroad where Elaine stands beautiful at a square in Greenwich Village, holding my hand and laughing. It is noon. Her red hair shines near the naked fig tree, and I hold the box of food we've bought to take to her home on 7th Street, underneath the lime tree, while in Sweden, near the liquid tree, Susan is four years old, waiting for me. Growing, growing, unknown, lighting the way. Four. I face right across the paved driveway, limping. I use my walking stick, black metal. I step where weeds emerge behind the red concrete with Susan's arm for balance and clear sight of a weedy lot we cross. Stopping and stepping slow across a rare and weedy flowering forever afternoon, bending to see the tiny yellow flowers bursting from the dark nothingness of time into our always space. A place the way circles, and we have now and all now and now is always a vacant lot, infinite in size green and still wet with spring, a wild flower, blue and yellow, a place lovers can show each other now and then, a place for talking, a place to speak with love, the way lost in the distance. Five. The way is women always. My mother a red geranium, despite her wish for leafy green. A five-year-old who knew a red blossom but couldn't see root, stem, and leaf that border my garden way now. And all the Susan years in Partisia. My father's mother, a fig tree in the Bronx, bent earthward wrapped in winter. A time bend in my way, where now and then a fig tree decorates its winter limbs with leaf buds, twelve feet high, unbound. Six. 
Karen's bra yellow as buttercup when she surprised me undressing. A byway too beautiful, a dragon, beware. I think of her now in warm winter, a way not taken. Path glowing in a different garden. Seven. A stone wall blocks the way. I turn aside and seek a green path back, but even butterflies can stutter over, and bulbuls, parrots, sparrows, palm doves, and on top, chameleons bask and run zigzag over, up, and down. Moles and earthworms tunnel, mouth stuffed dirt, making their ways and giggling past. Eight. Letters arrive from friends I'll never see to show the lupines whiter now than purple, flowering where the way approaches home by the concrete stairs and black scarred wooden door, the smell of herbs, the new berenia escaped from where the patio ends, and also end this foreign English meter. Upstairs again, I try to write replies across far skies and oceans. Nine. The way winds right behind a rock where fruitless strawberries sprawl and then divides in time. One track almost straight up where father sits a hand caressing mother, and a track turns down. I lie on my dead grandfather's bed in the Bronx, naked with a girl I've more than met, and towards the wall, crashing, with Elaine talking of Dunn's sonnets, making love before the wake converges in a rise of Columbine. End. The way this winter stays its chilling course under the loquat tree that swells with fruit as if it were spring, and the lime trees blossom, but blossom buds echo their perfume tensely coiled, as pure erotic looking for release, as fig trees shape already cover for modesty. Spontaneous creation out of winter formlessness, and memory stops, unneeded, in spring's gathering now. Thank you all for students.